had a pretty good day, like um, had some really strong moments. And then of course, you know, there's always the, if you're feeling, if you're feeling good in a, an ultra, don't worry, it'll pass, you know? <laughs> right, I'm about one hour in, probably a little over five miles. Oof. Um, making pretty good time. Felt pretty good navigating through that first lava rock field. It's beautiful out here. So did you hear about the elk? No. <laughs> so I got, I came, I, I saw a herd of elk, right? And then they kind of went up the mountain. And then as I kept going, I saw a bunch of them come back down the mountain to cross the, so the trail was here and I'm going down the trail and the, the elk then turned around and started coming down the mountain like this. And I thought maybe they got spooked by something, maybe potentially a mountain lion. I did see mountain lion tracks on the, on the course and fresh scat. So they kept coming down. So I was like, oh, this is cool. I'll get the GoPro out. I got some footage. And then I, what I didn't realize is that there were like 30 to 50 of them. Holy shit. Shit. Sketchy. Shit. There's a whole shitload of them up there. I just almost got trampled. This happens often in ultra marathons is that you can get a little complacent sometimes. Especially if you're going for a record, you're just like, oh, you're in these beautiful places and you're just like, oh, this is so nice, you know? And I think when you're really gunning for a time, you you have to kind of maintain more of a laser focus and not <laughs> be so complacent on like, oh, like check out the scenery, you know? And uh, there's other times for that, which I've done plenty of times out here. That's how I got to know the course so well. So. This course is always, no matter how many times I do it, so much tougher than you think. Making pretty good time. According to my calculations, I'm about just a few minutes, or basically right around course record pace. So really not a whole lot of room for error at this point. Now I'm getting onto the north side. I'm making my way to the north side of the mountain where the blast zone, when the uh, volcano erupted, it blew straight off the north side. So you'll see, it's crazy. Very unique landscape. I still have to deal with a nasty lava field which is sharp, black, abrasive volcanic rock that's very slow going, and then a big climb at the end. So, definitely starting to feel it, starting to warm up, but it sure is beautiful. I got up to the junction, which five years ago, I got there in five hours and 46 minutes, and I got to that same junction at five you hours and 46 out. minutes to the second. And I, this time I just had to make sure I didn't face plant and it was go time. Yeah, this is one of the things I love about circumnavigating is you can see your progress as you go. Making my way to the south side. It's, it's looking promising. Um, moving well. Definitely had a couple little low spots there, but weathered the storm as expected. Low spots are part of the deal, but uh, yeah, I've got just under two hours to go about eight or nine miles, so I'm not getting overconfident because I've got a nasty, nasty lava field that slows anybody down significantly. And then one pretty good climb to finish, and then I bomb it down to the to the finish. So I'm gonna get back to it. So you have to finish. Woo! I knew it was gonna be like either just a touch over six hours or a touch under. And I just, I like went freaking primal and just like 
gunned it. Everything hurt so bad, I was cramping, and I just gunned it all the way and came in like 41 seconds under the, unofficially 41 seconds under the record. Feels good, feels really good to like, just believe the whole day that it was possible and to push myself and to get redemption on that last attempt. Yeah, and it's just really special to always, as a ritual, to circum circle the mountain and um, have all these fine people out here uh, documenting it. Yeah. So.